This is Julie Wilson speaking on days gone by. W-G-D-B. Hope you're listening. Is this Dave Lefkowitz? It is indeed. Good, it's Julie here. <laughs> Hello, Julie. How are you? Oh, thank God, I am fine. How are you? Oh, thank God, I think I'm all right. You think you're all right. Yeah, well, you, you don't really know. <laughs> yeah, I just go along and I feel okay. I am a bit angry how I am. I say, I'm above ground. You know, that's if, if what's the old joke? If you wake up in the morning, you check the obituary column and you're not and in you're it. You're not so you're relieved. So. Okay, I'm above ground and holding. Thank well again, God willing, and thank God. Well, thank God too. I do. I say, I I appreciate every single day. Oh my goodness, I'm I'm not a particularly religious person. I just use that thank God thing because who else are you going to thank? Well, I'm not particularly uh, a religious person either, but I think there is a, a higher power, and uh, and one friend of mine. Or having a rough time, I I throw in an extra prayer. Oh, I I don't know if uh, the guy upstairs is listening. How can he listen to so many millions of people who need help? Um, I guess he multitracks. He I guess so, Don. <laughs> but see, I know with the computer age, I really should have been a pioneer woman. <laughs> no, you're not. I'm true. I think I'm out of my century. Well, I'm you were. an old-fashioned tomato. <laughs> I, say, I don't say tomato. Toma oh. I say tomato, like they do in Nebraska. <laughs> well, you were... Actually, you know, I guess we've already started the interview. I'm, I'm not going to... I'm just going to get right rolling with it. But you came from Omaha, right? Omaha, Nebraska. Yes, and I guess what? I'm going there day after tomorrow. Oh, to... to why? <laughs> to... A 65th high school reunion. How do you like those apples? I, apples, tomatoes. You say apples, I say tomatoes. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, I'm, I, I'm, uh, that's a 65. Have you been to any of the previous reunions? Oh, of course I have. We had the greatest class. We, I don't know how many will be there, because a lot of them have died. I, I feel just, I feel just so blessed to be here. Well, yes, well, well, absolutely, and and yeah, of course. Dave, Dave, where, where were you brought up? Where, where were you born and kind of raised up? Oh, well, New Yorker. I, I was born and in Brooklyn. In New York, and I lived, all the way, huh? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, lucky you! I <laughs> love New York. Well, you had to come out of Omaha. You even went to college there, and then I started to college there. Mm -hmm. Dave, but I uh, guess what? What? A burlesque show came through town, and I left with it. Wait. <laughs> now, hold on. Earl Charles Vanities yes. was a burlesque show, I thought well, it was? I thought it was. It had girls with pasties on their titties and skirts you could see through with feathers and roses on it. And it was a potpourri. There was a, a rally rose who played the piano, then the piano collapsed. <laughs> And there was a uh, golly golly who was a musician who came out and under his coat he had about a hundred little tiny yellow Easter chickens. Little baby chickens. What was and then there was a girl called Frances Urban who wound up being my roommate. They brought me with her because we had to share a room. Sure. And she used to do a back bend and play the violin on toe shoes. <laughs> no, and then there was a wonderful act. They built the house on stage, and then it all collapsed. And they say, they take the toilet seat, and they'd all put it around their faces, and they'd say, <laughs> right in the serious face. Oh, of course. That was, yes, course, Spike Jones. Uh, yeah. I mean, then we'd get soldiers up in the audience. And then we'd be in corsets, and we'd sing a song, Lace up your corset, lace up my corset. And then those poor guys didn't know what the hell they were doing, <laughs> but they were up there with a girl, <laughs> showing off. 
Right. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, that's part of... Um, it was a thrill for them just to be up there. Well, not yeah, even on stage, but with girls. Yeah. yeah. It was a thrill for me, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, my aunt... Uh, dared me to go down there. My, they all knew you couldn't keep, you couldn't keep me off a stage. Even by then, even then you knew. Even that was... then, no, no, no. Oh. It started when I was about six. Oh. And the girl I'm gonna stay with when I come out to Omaha was a grade school friend, right to grade school, and we took our first tap dancing class lessons together when we were six. Wow. Yeah, and we're going to go practice tapping when I go out there. <laughs> <laughs> but if I hadn't learned to do the time step, and uh, I wouldn't have gotten the job. But you did get the job in Vanity. I got the job, and I my my aunt dared me to go down there and ask for a job, and so I I went to see Mr. Carroll, and the guy said, "Oh, you went back to Hollywood? Come down and see me." He said, "One of our, one of our girls is sick. She's in the hospital oh. with pneumonia, so we're a girl short. So come down right now." Wow. So I did, and he said, okay, do a time step. I did. He said, sing a scale with the conductor of the music. He said, go upstairs, put on a costume, and come down and huh. show me. Yeah. So I, I did. I did as I was told. What and, song? And so he said, oh, well, you're blue. He said, you're not so hard, but you'll be all right. <laughs> oh, wow. And he said, uh, uh, 50 bucks a week. You start tomorrow at 10 o'clock. We need time Sunday. Take it or leave it. Wow. I said, I'll take it. Well, 50 bucks a week was pretty good money. Yeah, it was a lot of money in those days, sir. Yeah. I think I made more than my dad made. And what did your dad do? My dad was a coal salesman. A coal salesman? Coal. C-O-A-L. Yeah, coal, yeah exactly. Coal. Um, yes, and, and they... And they sold tons of coal to companies, and they burn and make fuel and get their electricity and whatever they need to keep going through the coal. Right. Yeah. Wow. So once you were on tour with Earl, Ke or was it a tour, or was it a sit down in New York for a no, 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 no. It was a tour. Oh wow. We were in a different place every day. Was it very, very weird for you going from the basic? Family lifestyle. Well, it's a word. <laughs> I got I I got a fabulous education overnight. I, I'll bet. Oh, I did. What were some of the wild things that happened or that that you participated in? Well, I, I really didn't part, 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 <laughs> participate uh, in anything. I just did. You know, I did what I was told on stage, mm -hmm. and then I was kind of embarrassed, because huh. it was kind of a tacky show, but it was a very good show, but it was, you know, a lot, a lot of different acts, it was, uh, you know, maybe, it seemed like burlesque, I didn't know what burlesque was, Right. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, I'd never been to a, a show where the girl was kind of showed off their titties and their belly button and stuff like that. You, But you did not have to do that, or did you? Well, I had to do what they did. I oh, yeah. I wore, uh, I wore a rhinestone on my belly button. <laughs> and, I, and I had about 15 pairs of falsies on. Right, well, yeah. You know. What about um, life on the road, not on stage, but, but just going from town to town and being that kind of, um, you know... What was well, it? Crazy? I was eating little coffee shops, and I made peanut and butter sandwiches and cocoa in my room. Uh huh. I got by, you know. Huh. And uh, and how long did that go for? Well, I was with him about six months. Then we got to New York finally. Uh huh. When I got to New York, I said I thought it was fabulous. I mean, there's only one New York, Dave. Let's face it. Oh, totally true. Oh my God! I used to, I used to stand outside the windows of little places that had staircases, and they'd say, "Girls wanted." Mm -hmm. I guess they were dance halls. Oh, I... but I never had the guts to go up the stairs. 
Ah, well, probably yeah, right there. I just kept going, and I, I said to the girls, we played at the uh, Low State Theater, and we were in New York a few days, and then we'd, we'd go over on the subway to Newark, Newark. to do a show. Yeah. And uh, we just kept going, and then I said to to the smart girls, the, the, the older ones that had been around, because I was 18. I had just turned 18. Mm -hmm. And I just graduated from Benson High School, my alma mater there, and I started at Omaha University because the tuition was $64. Wow. We had no money. Mm. I wanted to be an actress. I wanted to go to Northwestern. Oh, wow. And, and, you know, and go to that wonderful, the Goodman school that was so popular, that was so good. But my mom said, sis, we have no money. You can't go away to school. Just make up your mind. You're going to be happy. And you're going to go to, to Omaha, you. And I walked back and forth. It was only a couple of miles. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah, no, it was a wonderful experience. But the thing that always amazed me mm -hmm. was that my mom had the up. Don't let me go. I was so stupid. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess she figured you were going to be an actress. No matter. I mean, that's what you wanted to do, and it wasn't going to happen if you just stayed three more years at uh, Omaha University. You had well, to go out there and was, do it. She was very sweet to let me go. She, she said that she wanted to ask me something that was very important when I went home about 20 years ago and took my two little boys, because I wanted to be with them all the time during high school. Because all my friends said, you don't have to worry about them when, you, when they're little. You're with them, and, and you're caring for them, you're cooking for them, you're, you're minding. But when they're teenagers, that's when you have to worry. Hmm. And so somebody with authority has to be there around the clock. So you kind of took the time out of your career at that Yeah, point. that's right. I went home to Omaha, and I stayed home seven years. Hmm. And I took care of my mom, who had a horrible stroke. Oh. She was totally paralyzed, except her right hand, and she couldn't swallow. Ow. So I had to feed her through a tube in her nose. Uh, how do you how do you feed someone through a tube in You just hook the tube well, in I or? went to nurse aid school. Oh, wow. And I took a crash course for a week. And this was how long ago, though? About 25 years ago. So, so, so this was already, we're talking the 70s, 80s. Yes. Just before I get, you had sort of a comeback with Legs Diamond. That's right. No, no. No, no. 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 I came back in, I think, about 84. <laughs> Baron Poland, a wonderful man, he had put me in the St. Regis, and I was there for 20 years. On the St. Regis, wow. Yeah, it was, a, it was a, the classiest place I ever worked. This is Julie Wilson speaking. Mm -hmm. You have done um, a bit of Broadway as well as the cabaret and the... the yeah, yeah, I was just very lucky, Dad. I was just, my first show on Broadway when I got my equity card mm -hmm. was a rainbow for the new called Three to Make Ready. Uh, three to Make Ready, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, then I got lucky, and I got to do the National Tour of Christmas Cake. Right. With, with Anne Jeffries, God bless her, she's still gorgeous. <laughs> and then I got to do it in London with Pat Morris, and she's a most beautiful woman, and she is so lovely and gracious and such a beautiful woman. Oh, great. And she's 90. Oh, she's still I'm with us. Gorgeous. <laughs> I mean, really, she really is. Well, you're not so bad yourself. How, how old are you, or, or should uh, I not I'm ask? I'm 80. I'll be 83 in October. I'm 82 right now. Oh, that, well, you're still and you're still up there. You're still doing the cabaret. Is there a um, is there a different way that you approach singing and doing songs now? No, that, no, it just gets richer. Really? Yeah, it gets more fun. Cool. As I go along. Yeah, it is cool. It you, really is, Dave. Are there certain songs that are your absolute perennial favorites? Oh, yeah. Such as? Well, my I think my favorite, because so many people have asked me, 
And I love so many songs. Mm -hmm. But the one that always just kind of sums up, sums it up for me, and it's very short, and it's very meaningful. It's a Rogers and Hart song. Uh huh. From a show that was an early show that was not a hit. And, uh, mm -hmm. it's called This Funny World. This Funny World, okay. Do you know it? I'm sorry that I do not. It's a lovely song. Can I tell you the lyrics? By all means. This Funny World. It's one of the things you just cry for. This funny world can laugh at the dreams you're alive for. If you're beaten, can feel it. There's no pity for you, for the world cannot feel it. So keep to yourself, weep to yourself. This funny world can turn right around and forget you. It's always sure to roll right along when you're through. If you are broke, you shouldn't mind. It's all a joke. And you will find this funny world is making fun of you. Wow. It's a good lyric. It's it? very good. It's sort of a, a, a corollary to Old Man River with the sentiments that it's saying. It's like the world just goes on and you're... It doesn't even really care what you're up to. The world yeah. just goes, you know? Yeah. This is Julie Wilson. Do you have any memories or, or um, of thoughts about some of the amazing people you must have met during your career? People like, I don't know, Noel Coward, did you know? Ever? Oh, my God. What? I was so thrilled to get to meet... No card and just shake hands. Oh, yeah? And I was so thrilled. Ben of Spivak, the, the book writer mm -hmm. of Kiss Me Cake, mm -hmm. was very good to me. She brought a whole group of people, including Pat Morrison, to see me at the Maisonette from Kiss Me Cake. Right. The leading man, Alfred Drake. Oh, Alfred Drake, of course. You know, he was like 5'10 or 5'11, but damn, when he was on stage, you thought he was 6 foot 7. <laughs> I mean, really, he was amazing. Wow. That he was good. And did you have any en encounters with Richard Rogers or Oscar Hammer? Well, I, I auditioned. <laughs> I, I auditioned five times. For? For South Pacific. For Nellie. Nellie Fullbush. Uh-huh. Finally, I was out in <laughs> Kansas City in the Starlight Theater, like, which seated about 5,000 people mm -hmm. in Kansas City, under the stars. And if it rained, we couldn't do the show. Oh, well, wow. I was yeah. doing Showboat, mm -hmm. the part of Julie. And I got the telegram. Okay, you finally made it. You're Nellie in London. In London, right. Replacing Mary Martin. She finally All right. said, I've, I've done it enough. I, uh, I'm, I'm tired. Uh, I don't want to do it anymore. You know, I'm leaving the show. So I got lucky twice. I got to do Kiss Me Kate, Bianca, uh -huh. in London at the Coliseum Theater, and I got to do South Pacific. And you also did Bells Are Ringing. In the, yes, I did Bells Are Ringing, too. But that was a quick thing. Oh, okay. And uh, that was too much when I happened to be in London for an English musical called Bet Your Life with Sally Ann House. Mm -hmm. She's a lovely lady, too, and a very good actress. She is lovely. And there was a comedian over there who was so funny. 
for Arthur Askey. Arthur Askey? That... Yes, and he wore great big horn glasses, kind of like an English, very funny, Bobby Clark. Okay, yeah. Okay. So Sally was the ingenue. I was, I was the older lady. Mm-hmm. And I, I had a, <laughs> I had a, a song that, that, it, and, and I shocked a very dear American friend of mine. I said I'd settle for any old son of a bitch. <laughs> well, well, he yeah. came backstage and derailed me. He said, Judy, ladies, don't swear on stage. <laughs> and what did you say to that? I said, that's in the script, baby. <laughs> when they give me a script, I follow the script. That's it. You got to do I it. And I said, I, I, and then the song con- continued. And it said, I want a great big hunk of mail. Uh-huh. That was my big song. It was a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had one line, <laughs> one line. I was supposed to be in love with Arthur Askey. Uh huh. And he was about five foot eight. That's very funny. And he he walked across the stage with those great big long loaf of French bread. Uh-huh. And I looked at him, and I, and I got the dick of one, and I looked at him, I got his dick <laughs> I looked at him, and I looked at that long loaf of bread, French bread. Uh-huh. And then I said, I didn't know they grew so small. But <laughs> 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 anyway, I had it was an awful show, but I had so much fun. Oh, my God. Oh, God, I'll never forget it. And the king had just died. The, the king had just died? The king had just oh. died, and then they then they put Princess Elizabeth into it. Mm-hmm. She was in. Mm-hmm. The queen. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So I was there for all of that. And we got the raspberries. The horse went to the bathroom on stage. Oh, my God. And then Sally Ann and I did a duet that went on and on and on. Because uh, he's just a good-for-nothing goddamn man. Uh-huh. That was his song. Wow. And so and, and we got the raspberries from the gods, from the fans up there. Oh, my God. What? In there. That's what they call it. The raspberry? Yeah, I know. The, the raspberries. Absolutely. Yeah, up in the god. Yeah. Uh, From all the good fans. You know, they were the chief seats. We're finishing up our wonderful interview with actress and cabaret legend Julie Wilson. She's going to be at the Metropolitan Room this month. Don't miss her. There are so many questions and, and things that I've wanted to ask you and I, it's like we're already out of time it's just, I, can we do a part two at some point would of you course ready? darling we can do a part two any time oh it would be my you just call me up you have my my number Dave well yeah I got it from, from back in fact I'm like I'll sit on the air you call me up and you want to do it and and that would be, I'd love to do a part two. And that would be the sweetest thing and, and when can people are you going to be doing a, another show soon um Yes, I am. When, where, what? I'm going to be at the Metropolitan Room. When, when, when? Oh, uh, I open on Wednesday. Oh, my God, I feel like such a fool. My accompanist is a wonderful man called Christopher Denny. Christopher Denny, uh-huh. And he lives all the time. He never has any time doing so. He was with the best singer in the business in Cabaret, Karen Mason. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, she's divine. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and her voice is so terrific. Oh. But she you, has such a style. She's so fabulous. Well, you have, you have some sense of style yourself. <laughs> oh, well, I remember my voice doesn't compare. I, you know, I feel like I've, uh, I've lost most of my... I was working with one teacher uh-huh. that I really worshipped. For 32 years. Wow. 
And his name is Keith Davis. Okay, is, and he's still with us, Keith Davis? No, he oh, died okay. six or seven years ago. Boy, I miss him. Are you working with another teacher? or Yes, I'm working with another teacher. But, you know, teachers are a very special thing. Mm-hmm. I'm working out the time, and and uh, I, I don't work as much as I used to, and I don't. Uh, you know, I don't have anybody keeping me. But but uh, at eighty two, my son is keeping me in this apartment. Oh well, that's that's. Uh, and that's pretty good to be kept at eighty two, don't you think? What does your son do? He's an actor. Oh, well, and we he's know him. Awfully good. What, what's his name? Well, it's an. I you haven't heard of him. He's he's been in about forty different movies. Oh. But he's not a big star yet. Yes. He will be. Okay. Well, what's you've got to tell us his name. Okay. Me. Hey. H O L T. Holt. Is his first name. Uh huh. McCallany. Just like it sounds, is his second name, and nobody can spell it. Holt McCallany. Well, we'll. we'll... M C. Mm-hmm. That's a McCallany. Capital <laughs> C. A L L A N Y. McCallany. All right, we McCallany. will. McCallany. Well, okay. But he's a hell of an actor, he really is. And he's doing well enough to, to keep you in your apartment. I think that's pretty good. Yes, and then when he comes to New York, he has his bedroom in the house, and I have mine. Lovely. That's wonderful. So it is wonderful, and I feel very blessed. Well, we have been so blessed to have Julie Wilson with us in the neighborhood. Go see her at the Metropolitan Room, please. And then well, you're very cute. And we will certainly talk to you again. All Julie. right, Dave, I'd love it. Wonderful, I'm thanks. I'm thrilled about the Metro. It's such a great room. And, and you're such I've a great lady. I've been here about, oh, about 40 times to see other people singing. That's my son. I go see other people. Well, yeah, that's, that's your life. It's what you it's believe my in. my life and my partner. And I love Barbara Brussels. I love Barbara Fasano. It's all one big community. Everybody in the, in the cabaret community knows and, and tries to respect and, and help each other. I think that's pretty neat. Well, I think it's neat, too. So much fun talking to Julie Wilson. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, thank you, Dave.